Welcome to another exciting adventure in Crushtron. Today we're going to build a small home theater touch panel in Crushtron Vision Tools or VT Pro. We also have a great video that discusses the programming of the processor that drives this touch panel. You can see it at overworklogic.com. Just search for simple home theater. In this project, we're going to keep the components and methods rather basic and not get so granular. We plan on going into more detail in the future uh, with various approaches and interface designs. So with that out of the way, let's dive into our project. The file name is going to be Simple Home Theater SG for Smart Graphics. And for panel type, just make sure that we have XPanel 2.0 Smart Graphics selected. Go ahead and hit Create. And for this project, we are going to use a CT Neo. Uh, that's the thing we're going to go with. Just go ahead and hit choose. Now over in the property grid, let's hit uh, the checkbox for this display join indicator. Then let's go up to position and size and make a note of the size of this project. Now let's come over to the show workspace and right click on the simple home theater SG project. And then we're going to come down and create a new page. We're going to title this home. And then what we're going to do is right click on it and we're going to make this page as first or mark this page as first. This will make this the first page that your touch panel will go to when it starts up. With the home page selected, come over to the property grid and let's go down to the backgrounds. Expand that and in here there's a number of backgrounds. What we want to do is change that to one, enter, and this will give us the option to import a background. And what we want to do in here is come to path. Where it says none, we want to hit this drop down arrow and import. We have an image in here, lights PNG. You'll notice that the dimensions aren't quite as large as what our workspace is going to be. Uh, what we need to do is just go ahead and open that, open that, and then make sure this is on stretch. This file type allows you to select all sorts of things and you can adjust. And since this image isn't quite the right size, we're just going to go ahead and stretch that and so it fills in and doesn't show any of those gaps. Now we are going to start building our upper part of our interface. Uh, what you need is a smart graphics control browser. If this is not visible for you, go ahead and go up here in options and enable it. Uh, this is where sometimes some of these panels disappear. You can come in here and enable them as well as toolbars. If some of those toolbars disappear on you, you can come in here and enable those. But what we want is a smart graphics control browser. And what we're going to do is go in here into the images and grab this fill border or take that and drag it out here. And then what we're going to do is take the fill color and change that to black. What you do is just click on that and uh, select black. And what we want to also do is take this uh, thickness here and let's do, drop that to zero. That is the thickness of that um, boundary um, border color that was there. Get rid of that. And also notice that the Fill alpha on this is at 0.5. It gives that black slight transparent look. Well, in case you're wondering, these grid lines, they're just part of the program. You can t uh, show grid or not show grid. I just sometimes like to have it on there just to see a few things. Now what we want to do is come over to here to position and size. Uh, open up this. And what we're going to do is change this. We're going to drop this top down to zero. And left, we're going to put a zero. Width, we want to have is 800. And our height, we are going to want that at 112. Get rid of that zero. That puts our border up here at the top, our little fill in area that we have. Just sort of puts a nice little darkened layer over the top of this background. Now we're going to add our first button. Let's go over here to buttons in the Smart Graphics Control Browser. And we're going to drag a button out here onto the surface. Now come over here to button styles. Drop this down and what we have is a style section in here. What this is is to sort of change the look of your button. What we want to do is come down to transparent button because we don't need any of those styles for what we're going to be doing at this time. Uh, we'll close that up. Now we're going to come over to icon type right here. Drop down this drop down arrow and we're going to go for style state. Use style state. And then in this, we're going to drop all the way down towards the latter half and find this power button right here. And that gives us that little power indicator that we want. And we want to have this show control feedback enabled. 
And here for press digital join, we want to have one. So that's what this button will be assigned to. For the label, let's press this uh, settings button here. And what we're going to do is come over to digital. And the digital is going to be a digital join number one. And text if true, that will be power on. And text if false, that will be power off. Press OK. There's our information. Press OK. And there it is. Then all we need to do is come over here and twirl down the position and size. We're going to change the top to the location to be 12. Left, we will put is 40. Width, we're going to make is 120. And then height, we're going to make 96. Okay. And then that'll give us the button we're looking for right now. So there we have it. Um, Thank you and have a good night. Well, I guess we do have a bit more that we should probably do. With that button still selected, let's go over to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. This made a copy of the power button. Now we're going to come over here into the property grid and modify this to become the cable button. In the position and size location, we're going to change the top parameter to be 12, left to be 262. Let's come down to icon state and change this to TV. Let's place a 5 in the digital join. And this time for the label, we're going to come down here and double click this delete and call this cable. Now with this button still selected, let's go up to edit, copy, edit, paste, or control C, control V. And this made a copy of the cable button. Now we just need to modify this to become our Blu-ray button. Let's come back over to position and size, change this to be 12. And for this position, we will have 418, 418. Then again, down in icon types, under icon state, we're going to go into here and we're going to come down to Blu-ray. And the digital join for this is going to be six. And again, we're going to double click in here and type in Blu-ray. And now we have the two buttons for our sources for this project. For fun in this project, we're going to add an indicator for what source is being selected. So come over here to the Smart Graphics Control Browser, and we're going down here to Text. What we want is Formatted Text. Drag and drop the Formatted Text item to the Planal Work Surface. In the Property Grid, we're going to come over here to Position and Size again, and yes, we're going to relocate this guy. We're going to locate him to 28. For the top, 624. For the left, we're going to keep 150 and 48 for the width and height. Let's scroll over so we can see that. Sorry this is a little scrunched up. I did this for recording purposes uh, to keep it sort of visible and easier to see what we're doing. For the label, come down and press those three dots to label settings. Highlight and delete label. Come over to the dynamic text serial. We want serial join number one. And default text will be source. OK and OK. And to totally cause you to question my removal of the borders earlier, we're going to add some borders back in. But just to have a little fun with it, we're going to go over to our Smart Graphics Control Browser. Let me uh, shrink some of this down a little bit. Go into Images, Border. Let's drag that out here. We're going to change the border color to white. And let's make that thickness uh, 2. Come down here and delete the heading under Label. And you probably know what I'm going to do next. Come up here to Position and Size. Change the top to 0. Left to 4. Width to 196. 
and height to 180, or I'm sorry, 108. Look at my notes correctly. What that's gonna do is give us a nice little border around our power button. With the border selected, we're gonna copy by doing Control C, Control V. That'll make another copy of the border. And our position is gonna be zero, 200 for the left. And then we're gonna have 400 for the width. And we will leave 108 for the height. Now that surrounds our sources. And we'll do one more of these. So we're gonna do Control C again and Control V. So with the border reselected, Control C, Control V, makes us a new copy. The top will be zero once again. Left is gonna be 600. And our width is gonna be 196. Oops, I didn't put 600 in there, 600. And that'll give us, that'll give us a border around our source. Now we're gonna do the bottom bar for this project. In order to do that, we're gonna grab our fill border, drag it in. We're gonna change our fill color to black. And we're gonna get rid of our thickness. That'll make that fill, fill border go away. Then we're gonna twirl down our position and size. We're gonna change our position to 488 for the top, zero for the left, 800 for the width, and 112 for the height. Now that that's in the right place, let's go over to Smart Graphics Control Browser, go down to Buttons, and what we're gonna do is drag another button out here. We're gonna make our Mute button. In the Property Grid under Button Style, we're gonna roll that open and go down to Transparent Button. Yeah, that's our favorite today. Now go to Icon Type, we're going to use a drop down and make this use style state. And under icon state, we're going to drop this down to near the bottom where we have volume mute. Next, we're going to check show control feedback. And we're going to change our uh, digital press to 9. And yes, we're coming up here to position and size. We're going to change this top position to 500. This left position to 0. The width, we're probably going to go with 112, and for our height, we're going to go with 82. And I'll put the button in the position and make it the size that we would like to have it. And with that button selected, we're going to go ahead and come up here to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste, or Control c Control v whichever you prefer. Okay, we're going to change that size real quick, 500 for the top and we're going to go with 112 for the left. Next we're going to make our digital join 10. Then we're going to come down to label and uh, we're going to make that 25%. And then I'm going to select that and change that to 30 for the size. Make it a little larger. Oh, I almost forgot. I want to remove that image. So it's just the percentage showing right there. Okay, we're gonna make another copy. Let's do Control C, Control V. Oh, gotta make sure that's selected. Even though it looks selected, sometimes you have to click on it again to make sure it's selected. Control C, Control V. And we're gonna return that top to 500. And the left to 224. We're gonna keep the width and height and change the digital join to 11. And for the label, we're gonna we're, for the label we're gonna change that to 50%. Okay. Okay, we're gonna make another copy of a button. Control C, Control V. We're gonna return the top to 500. We're gonna make the left 332. Width is gonna be 88, and height is gonna be 88. Okay. Digital press is gonna be eight. And let's delete the label by double clicking and then pressing delete. Then under icon type, we're going to put that back to use style state. 
And for the icon that we're going to use, we're going to go to the left, left alt. Almost forgot. Now with this button selected again, control C, control V, make another copy. And for position, we are going to put this once again to 500. Oh, wait for that to save. 500. Pre select it and 500. Gotta love the auto save. Left to 700. Digital join to 7. In the icon state, we're gonna go with the right. The right alt. Now to see the button, we'll just scroll over here, take a look at the button. There it is. So let's change it up from all these buttons and go back over to our Smart Graphics control browser and let's go down to the gauges. Let's drag and drop a liquid gauge horizontal onto our work surface. And in the property grid under position and size, we're gonna locate this guy. Top will be 536. Left will be 412. Width will be 296. And height will be staying at 20. Touch analog feedback needs to be one. And under orientation, we need to twirl that down. Gauge style. What we're gonna do is set this to liquid horizontal gauge white. Now we're going to add another one of our lovely borders back onto this lower bar. So let's just grab one of these ones that we have up here. Control C, Control V. And then what we're going to do is for position, top is going to be 490. Left is going to be 3. Width is going to be 794. And height is going to be 108 as is. And that'll give us our nice little border around the edge. And we kept it just a little off the edge because we sort of like this little black. It sort of creates a little separation. Now we're going to come over here and make a sub page. There are several ways we can make a sub page. You could always right click on your project, come down to new sub page, or you can come over and uh, click on one of these little icons right here and that'll give you the ability to create a sub page or you can come to file new sub page with our new sub page we're going to call this cable control width is going to be 600 and the height is going to be 300 and what we're going to want to do is uh, expand the backgrounds and display background. We're gonna change the color to black and the alpha to 127. This will give a nice darkened glass plate look to the background. For the conservation of time and to impart lazy, I mean um, efficient practices, let's hop back onto the home page. Let's scroll over here and uh, scroll up here. You shouldn't have to do that if you have a better resolution than what I'm dealing with right now. Let's select our source. We're going to copy. Then we're going to hop back over here and we're going to paste. And we're going to change its position to 8 for top, 8 for left. And then that'll put it right where we want it. Now we need a button. Let's minimize that. Come over here. We're in the Smart Graphics Control Browser and we're going to grab a standard button. Drag that over. This will be the foundation of the buttons that will go on this page. Position will be 84 for the top, 76 for the left, width will be 52, and height will stay at 46. For icon type, let's use style state. And for the icon state, we're going to use up for this situation. For our digital join, we're going to use 60. And that'll be it for this button. Now this button will just be copied and pasted for the remainder of the buttons for this page. Due to the monotony that comes with uh, building these buttons, I will spare you of that and just jump ahead in time. 
Through the magic of editing, I have saved you from a horrible, torturous time of watching me build all those buttons. Now let's build our second subpage. So with cable control selected, right click, copy, and then we're gonna go up here and right click and paste. That'll give us a second con cable control dash one. Right click on that and let's rename that. We're gonna call this Blu-ray control. Oops, a capital O, I do that all the time. Okay, now once again, to save you from the suffering of time uh, of watching me do a monotonous process, I'm gonna stop the recording and get all of this arranged and then start again. And there we have it, our new Blu-ray controls panel. I kept the same um, up-down navigational controls just had to change their digital joins and then uh, deleted a lot of other ones and resized and rearranged a few just to make it fit the desired look. Now let's embed these sub pages into our primary home page. Let's take the Blu-ray control, drag that down to the home page and then let's come over here and grab our cable control and drag that down to the home page. Let's close this sub page here so we can see what we're doing and this one as well. Now you'll notice that these are not where we want them to be positioned on the, the panel. You can see that these uh, sub pages are up here and to the left. So what we're going to do is fix that. Uh, with the Blu-ray control panel selected, come down to position and size, change the top position to be 150 and the left position to be 100. And to make this a little easier to see, we can hide the other uh, cable control by right clicking on it and unchecking this visibility. Now that looks about like what we would like to have. The position looks nice and natural. That's a good spot for it. So let's make that change to the cable control. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take the Blu-ray, hide its visibility, take the cable control and make it visible again. We're gonna come into cable control and, oh, I double clicked, I always do that. Let's close that so we can see what we're doing. Reselect cable controls, uh, change this to 150 for the top and 100 for the left. The only thing we left we have to do is make these visibility joins. Uh, we need this one to be five for the visibility join for the control. And for the Blu-ray, oh, I double clicked again, just love it. The Blu-ray, we're gonna have that as six. And that pretty much does it for this touch panel. To see it in action, go check out our home theater design uh, video that we have on our website. And please come out to our website, overworklogic.com and join our newsletter. We plan on releasing some freebies and great information here in the near future. And please like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you and have a good one.